Carl, thank you so much for being here. I, I guess maybe the takeaway for me is that free trading is worth a lot of money. <laughs> so it would seem. Um, look, they, they, they're a bold and ambitious company. I think they've done amazing things for the retail trader, uh, both just in terms of access, availability, you know, an excellent app that's easy to use, great UI, UX. Um, they've always been bold and ambitious, and they continue to show that through their IPO and the allocation processes you just, you just mentioned, right? Very unusual to have that heavy a load going to the retail investor and also allowing, you know, employees to sell a certain number of shares, you know, a certain percentage now and a certain percentage a little bit down the road, you know, very unusual not to be locked up. So it, it, it's a, a very bold IPO. So you mentioned, Carl, the, 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 the user interface and the user experience, the UI UX of this particular company here. It's also not come without controversy. There, there, there's been allegations of a gamification of investing, this idea that it's become like an online casino. How does Robinhood kind of get beyond that and that kind of image, I guess, with a lot of investors out there, that there's only a certain type of folk out there that are customers of a company like Robinhood? So I, I think that's exactly right, Don. One, one of the dangerous things here is, is obviously gamification. And I think it, it gets back to, you know, how do you educate the new retail customer about the risks of trading, right? How do you get away from that, you know, confetti approach to, yay, you just made your first trade, to this is how this trade fits into your overall financial picture, right? Do you have a, a savings account? Do you have money socked away for, you know, that rainy day or, that unexpected expense that's going to come down the road. If you are trading your dollars and those are the only dollars you have, you have to understand you could lose all of that as well, right? So yes, gamification, I think is, you know, it tends to be an issue when you talk about that just for the first time trader. I think gamification can be a powerful tool if you're using it to educate the retail trader and giving them a chance to understand what they're doing before they jump into the pool with both feet. So, so, Carl, th there, there's also been some anecdotal and even fairly significant evidence to suggest that a lot of the growth in Robinhood over the course of the last, call it 18 months or so, was driven around stimulus check timing. We, we've seen accounts funded around those times that stimulus checks went out. How exactly then does Robinhood kind of go into this, this online brokerage world without possibly having some of those stimulus checks in play anymore? Do you think that it's just because of that assistance that many of those accounts were open in the first place over the last year? So I think the, the global pandemic and, and the stimulus checks that were issued and also just the cash that was sitting on the sidelines, right? As people didn't go out to restaurants, people didn't otherwise spend money on, you know, on goods or services that they would because they were locked down, right? Trading became that, that, outreach that the, the ability to go out and, and do something in the marketplace for yourself. So I do think that had a large impact. One of the great stories here for Robinhood is, you know, Dom, you're exactly right. They have, according to filings and what they've been saying, over 20 million customers have opened accounts on their platform. That's a huge customer base, but the account sizes are very small. Can they continue to drive that growth? But the bigger question for me is if you have these 20 million customers on your platform, can you continue to monetize that in the right way? Can you provide those individuals with additional financial services that can really help them over time? So that, that's the key to me is, can, can they unlock the value and can they provide the services for these customers that they've brought in to keep them investing as the stimulus checks you know, dry up and as the, the heat around the meme stocks and all of the, you know, the I guess the, the advertising and whatnot goes away how do you continue to drive that customer base forward and provide them with more value? So, so, so you bring up an excellent point here, and it gets to, to my next question, Carl. For many brokerages, the, the real value, at least a large chunk of the value for these companies in the past, and, and even presently right now, is the company Rolodex. Your former company, E-Trade, was purchased by Morgan Stanley. Um, for for a large reason, a large reason behind that was was to get access to those customers, right? Because you want to keep those in the ecosystem. You want to kind of cross sell those products to other people. What exactly then does Robinhood have to do to grow that thirty two billion dollar market value into say sixty four? If those customer accounts right now are not quite as large and not quite as valuable, how do they become more valuable? How much more in terms of services do they have to consume? before they become that much more richer in terms of customer value? 
Well, absolutely the key, right, it is, is gaining additional share of wallet from those consumers and customers. And the big question mark, if you go back to, you know, what we just spoke about, how do you know that those individual customers are going to continue to spend on the platform, going to continue to invest? They have to broaden their service offering to cover more, right? There are questions around business model. There are questions around what happens with payment for order flow, right? So how do you provide those other financial services and those other tools that help individuals deal with their finances on a regular, you know, on a regular basis from day to day. So a savings account, a checking account, right? Teach them about different ways to start to diversify, get into investing, offer additional asset classes, offer some professional advice down the road. It's the building block that they have. They've been such an amazing customer acquisition tool. The way that they've been able to drive eyes to their platform has been absolutely stunning. Right, but now the key is unlock that additional value and show the consumer that you're more just more than just a click in a trade, that you can actually help them manage their finances go forward. That to me is the key. I mean, if you look at what Schwab has done over the years, the way that they've built out their platform now, you know, unrivaled, they can afford to give away trading services for free. And quite honestly, they don't need payment for order flow. Right. Sure. They have a, an amazing business model they built over time because they give the consumers so much value for what they park there. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.